Good morning, happy Friday. Welcome back to Kevin Toll Reads. I am way too hyper in the morning, but we're just gonna roll with it. I also realize I need a haircut, so yeah, that's gonna have to happen soon too. But that's not why you're here. You are here because I have another video in the Why You Should Read series. And today you're in for a treat. Saddle up, partner. We're talking Why You Should Read Louis L'Amour. Louis L'Amour was born Louis Dearborn L'Amour in 1908 in Jamestown, North Dakota. He passed away in 1988 in his home in California. He died from lung cancer, although he was not a smoker. He wrote over 100 novels, 400 short stories, two nonfiction works, poetry, and a science fiction novel. He has sold over 320 million copies of his works. He wrote in the genres of Western adventure, frontier, nonfiction, and sci-fi. He's won many awards and throughout his career, he won the Presidential Medal of Freedom that he received from President Reagan in 1984. He also won a Congressional Gold Medal in 1982, and also he won a National Book Award in 1979. Some unique cool facts about L'Amour, he was one of seven children. His father, Louis Charles L'Amour, went to um, the French spelling of their name. His, their name was actually spelled L A capital M O O R E, and they went to and adopted the L apostrophe A M O U R um, in the late, I think it was 1930s, is when actually Lewis did took on the pronunciation that his father did. The family traveled when when Lewis was young. They went moved from North Dakota to Texas doing cattle. They worked mines, they went to Arizona, they went to New Mexico. A lot of the characters we saw in Louis L'Amour's books are based on characters he witnessed growing up. Um, he spun off some of those characters and some of those memories into his books. He got a start uh, actually writing stories for magazines. Um, and he actually was didn't really get fame until after World War II. He wrote under the pen name Tex Burns, and he also wrote 65 TV scripts and 30 um, stories from the motion picture industry. Another interesting cool fact was he was a professional boxer and prize fighter in his early 20s. Um, his first novel was Westward the Tide. It was published in 1951. He wrote the, sh the short story, The Gift of Cochise, which he published in 1952, and it was seen by John Wayne, who bought the screen rights for $4,000. And during the writing of the screenplay, Ch Ch or Chase Lane was changed to Hondo Lane, and it led to Lewis publishing the screenplay as a novelization under that name in 1953 with the book Hondo. Most publishers in the 50s and 60s only expected like one novel per year per author, and obviously Louis L'Amour would spend yarns a lot. Um, he worked with his editor at a publishing company called Gold Medal, as well as he, he signed a contract with Bantam and was able to agree in those contracts to write three to four novels a year. Um, he was truly a machine when it came to public, uh, writing books. At 15, another interesting fact, he joined the circus and spent time as a miner. He also traveled the world on an East African schooner ship. To this day, all of his works are still in print. He served time in the U.S. Army as a lieutenant. And during the 1960s, he wanted to build a town where they would offer a live movie set for owners, but also be a functional town, but it never, felt, it never got the funding and fell through. He wrote several different series throughout all of his novels. Yeah, obviously the Sackett series, which several of us are reading now. Hopalong Cassidy, Kilkenny, Chantry, Talon, Tumbling K, Chick Bowdery, and Cactus Kid, to name a few. So why Louis L'Amour? I have read seven books by Louis L'Amour, so I'm definitely not as well versed as some others, but I felt compelled to do this based on the fact that I'm starting to grow in my reading of him, plus we're reading the Sackett series. And so I find that he's a really good author. Um, I find his characters are both good and bad and likable. At the same time, you can kind of pull for him. You know the antagonist. You, you kind of enjoy the antagonist, so to speak. Um, they're not always lovable characters, but you can kind of understand 
their place and appreciate them. And I think that's a very good trait of a good author. Emotions wise, I think the frontier struggles, the struggles during um, a more violent time, you know, in the 17, 1800s um, out West where it was more rugged, it was lawless and more oppressive where the minimal things could cause major issues down the road. I think he does a good job writing that. I also think his writing is pretty vivid and straightforward, so it's very easy to consume. Obviously, most of his books are very short, you know, 150 to 200 pages. Some of them are, are larger, but um, it's quick reads, and I think that also provides an allure for some, some readers. Um, obviously, I, I'm a big fan of this when it comes to authors, but in Lamore's works, not everyone lives, you know, and it, not everything is a fairy tale. Um, some people will say that his writing can be kind of outline, so to speak, where they're kind of the same, but I have yet to kind of get to that slog or that place where I, I felt that, um, but I, I do like the fact, or I do appreciate the fact that he's not afraid to kill off characters. Pacing, obviously, we, 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 I've said this in many of my re individual reviews of the works I've read, pacing is always really good. And I'm always just blown away by how much he packs in such a small amount of pages where other authors take twice as long to tell the same amount of story, the same amount of substance or action or characters. Um, yeah, I, I think it's good. I, I Again, back to characters, I think he does a good, very good job of writing characters. He definitely doesn't dwell too much into character development, so to speak. It's more so in the settings and time period and nostalgia, I would have to say so far. Um, again, take that for what it's worth. I'm only seven books into his massive catalog. You know, before the 1940s, most Westerns were called dime novels. Um, they were the popular choice in the genre. And then I think from the late 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, um, Westerns kind of changed. And I think definitely Lamore was a pioneer in this, along with Jack Schaefer, Edward Abbey, who were also popular during that time as well. I read that online. Obviously, I wasn't born then. <laughs> but I thought that was interesting because I, I wanted to know, is, is, is Lamore kind of the, the, the ultimate kind of godfather of Westerns? And he definitely is up there in the mention. So in terms of books, you know, I have read, you know, and what I've enjoyed. Obviously, again, I've read seven books so far. I finished my seventh one last night, which was To the Far Blue Mountains, which was book two in the second series. Um, overall, the average score and rating I've given the seven books I've read is a 4.3. So it's definitely pretty solid. You know, I have some, some favorites up here. Flint, High Lonesome, The Quick and the Dead. Um, four six and four fives reads for me. Uh, I've only had one three, which was Last Stand at Papaga Wells. Um, it was okay. It was. I'm glad I read it. But and again, it's not a 500 page commitment for most of his books, so you can kind of give him some slack on that. If if it's it's just not a story you just connect with, you're not gonna you know have a huge time or investment. So my overall thoughts, I think. Some of his writings can start to seem a little familiar as, as most of the feedback that I've, I've seen or I've been told from people that have read far more than me. I've, again, I've yet to see it. I will say, and I did mention this in uh, my re recent Let Me Know video, I think his endings can be rushed. Uh, even though I enjoy the books for what they are, they definitely can be rushed. Uh, a little abrupt. I definitely think, again, they're great palate cleansers. If you're reading other series or other epic fantasy books or just big, big books in general and you need a break from them, you can definitely churn one of these out in a, in a day or two. And so I think those are really, I think that's a really a great allure to his writing. Um, I wish, honestly, I would have appreciated his works sooner in life in my reading career. Um, he was definitely the ones I used to see as a kid and think, oh, what's that all about? You know, and you would see them on the little spindle racks and such. And I never really picked it up because as a kid, I just wasn't that enamored to reading. And if I was going to read something, it definitely had to have ver something very cool on the cover. Um, Westerns just weren't my thing, so to speak. 
Obviously, I'm enjoying his works. I think he's a great overall author. I think he's one that um, is is very accessible to readers, but I also think it, he's accessible in general. If you go to most bookstores, they're going to have his, his, his works. Um, one of the other cool facts I kind of found that I wanted to tag along here in this section was almost all of his books are still in publication and still being printed. And that says a lot. Um, some of these books span, you know, many, many decades back. So I think that's really cool. But they're also easily accessible at used bookstores. You can find, you know, copies like these that aren't too shabby. Some are more beat up than others. But you can find them for a dollar or less at most used bookstores. And so there's always accessibility to him. And so those are my thoughts. Louis L'Amour, another great author that... Over the course of the last year, I've taken the dive, and I've really enjoyed them. I'm glad I did. Again, I wish I would have started sooner, but here we are. I hope you're having a great Friday. I hope you get something from this, and I will talk to you all later. Have a good day.